Hello, and welcome to Wild McLean's Tech Tip Videos. I'm Brian, and today we will be taking an in-depth look at our GV90 boiler and the ignition failure fault. This will show up on the control module as flame light flashing. We do have several other videos that examine the different functions of the GV90, but today we will focus in on ignition failure or getting just a few seconds of flame and how to properly diagnose the components related to ignition and flame rectification. If the boiler you are working on is not getting to the point of firing or other lights besides the flame light are flashing, this video does not address those issues. This one is just for flame light flashing or no ignition. It is very important to perform every step in order to arrive at the correct diagnosis. If you skip any of these steps, you may end up with an incorrect diagnosis and find yourself replacing parts that are not needed. So, we will start by eliminating any possible external electrical issues. It is not uncommon to find a few volts on thermostat wires coming to a boiler. This can cause many different problems since the thermostat connection must be a dry contact. The thermostat and wiring cannot add any voltage to the circuit. First, turn off the power and locate the thermostat wire coming to the boiler and disconnect it from our TT wires. Twist the TT wires together and place a wire nut on them so they don't short out to a grounded surface. Leave these jumped for the entire troubleshooting procedure. Next, check to see if there is a low water cutoff connected to the boiler. These are notorious for partial shorts causing electrical issues. Remove the device from the circuit and jump the corresponding wires to complete the limit circuit where the low water cutoff was connected. Normally, this would be connected to the limit circuit. Now, energize the boiler and check to see if you get ignition. If the boiler won't light, we have just crossed one item off the list. If it does light, check each wire on the thermostat circuit to ground. There should be no measurable voltage on any of the wires. Use an isolation relay to protect the boiler from stray voltage. Next, inspect the drain trap on the left side of the boiler. Make sure the drain is free flowing and check that it is not clogged inside the boiler. If there are no clogs in the drain, we can move on to the next step. And up next is the hot surface igniter. We need to make sure the igniter is getting 120 volts from the module and is being energized at the right time in the cycle. Check for voltage at the point of firing. You should see around 120 volts coming to the igniter when the gas valve is being energized. We also need to check the resistance of the igniter. The igniter must have a resistance value between 40 and 75 ohms while at room temperature. If it is out of range, replace the igniter only with our approved part. This is critical for flame rectification since the module uses the hot surface igniter as the flame sensor. And since we are on the topic of flame rectification, we must ensure the boiler has a solid bonded ground. Without a ground, the module cannot rectify the flame signal coming from the igniter. So we will need to remove the terminal that says power from the module. Check the harness terminal wires, black to white. You should see around 120 volts. Check black to green. You should also see around 120 volts. Now, check white to green for voltage. There should never be more than one volt between neutral and ground. 
If you see measurable voltage between neutral and ground, that means one of those two wires is not connected to the grounding bar in the panel. This will need to be corrected before the boiler can rectify the flame. Next up, we need to make sure the entire vent system is clear of obstructions. From the outside air intake all the way through the boiler and all the way out to the exhaust termination. A blockage in any part of the system will cause the boiler to not fire. First, inspect the air intake and exhaust from the outside to make sure there is nothing blocking either of the termination points. Next, remove the air intake pipe from the boiler and inspect the screen. It is not uncommon to see leaves or bugs blocking this screen. Make sure the intake screen is completely clear. And to be sure the air intake pipe is clear, try to fire the boiler with the air intake removed from the unit. The next point that can get clogged is the orifice plate. We have found bees, bugs, and even a mouse that has made it all the way through the intake and block the orifice. It doesn't take much blockage to keep the boiler from lighting because at this point in the flow all our combustion air is forced through a hole about one half inch around. You can remove the air intake pipe from the gas manifold and carefully inspect the orifice opening for obstructions. An inspection mirror can be used since it is a tight squeeze to get a good look at the orifice. You will also need to confirm the correct orifice plate is installed. These are designated with boiler size, the number of sections, and fuel type, LP or natural gas. Next, remove the clean out plate near the exhaust port in the bottom left hand corner of the boiler. Inspect the interior of the heat exchanger for excess corrosion or debris. We don't normally see much debris in the bottom of the sections, but it can happen, so it's always a good idea to check this area. While we have the clean out plate removed, try again to fire the unit. If it lights, this indicates an obstruction at some point beyond the clean out plate. And that brings us to the recuperator. This secondary heat exchanger can get plugged with combustion byproducts and keep the boiler from firing. If the unit fires with the clean out plate removed, either the recuperator is blocked or the exhaust pipe is blocked. The manual contains detailed instructions on how to remove and clean the recuperator. You will need to follow the manual and ensure that the recuperator allows free flow of the exhaust gases. If we still have not gotten the boiler to light, we will have to dig a bit deeper. You will need to check the incoming gas pressure at the gas valve. This will give us two very important data points. First, it will tell us if the gas valve is opening. And it will tell us if we actually have enough gas to make this thing get up and go. So, connect your manometer to the inlet port on the gas valve. It will be marked in or min. Take an accurate reading of the incoming gas pressure with the boiler in standby. The maximum inlet gas pressure is 14 inch water column for natural gas and liquid propane. The absolute minimum inlet gas pressure is 3.5 inch water column for both gases. If the incoming gas pressure is not in this range it must be corrected before the boiler will ignite properly. Now, with the manometer connected to the inlet tapping, attempt to fire the boiler. Watch the incoming pressure closely. At the point of firing, you should see the incoming pressure drop slightly. This indicates that the gas valve is opening. If there is no pressure drop in the pressure, there will need to be some in-depth evaluation of the gas valve circuit. First, confirm that the pressure switch tubing 
is connected to all of the correct ports. Use this diagram or the diagram in the manual to make sure all these connections are correct. If the wrong tube is connected to the gas valve, it will not open. Also, check the pressure switch manifold for any moisture. This can block the airflow in the tubing and potentially keep the gas valve from opening. Now, there is one more item related to the pressure switch that must be checked. Carefully remove the tube from the black side of the pressure switch and confirm that the green orifice is installed in the port. If this is missing, the back pressure from ignition will momentarily trip the pressure switch and in some cases cause a flame failure error. Next, check the resistance of the gas valve coil. Measure the ohm reading on the two outside pins of the gas valve with the rectifier plug disconnected. You should see around 52 ohms resistance on the gas valve. If this looks good, check the voltage from the module. You should read around 24 volts at the pins on the module at the point of firing. If not, replace the module. If that reading is normal, check the voltage at the rectifier plug. The gas valve uses DC voltage, so the gas valve harness uses a rectifier. You should see around 19 to 23 volts DC at the rectifier plug, the two outside pins, as the boiler is trying to ignite. If the voltage leaving the module is correct, but the DC reading is not correct, replace the rectifier harness. All right, so we have a few items left here to check, and they will require a little bit deeper dive into the unit. This will involve removing the blower and inspecting the burner cone. It is recommended that you have a new blower gasket on hand before removing the blower. Instructions for removing the blower can be found in the maintenance section of the manual. Be very careful with the hot surface igniter. It is very fragile. Once the blower is removed, remove the burner cone and make sure it is completely clean and free flowing. Dirt, bugs, and debris can accumulate in the cone and this can cause the boiler to not fire or produce an uneven flame that does not hit the flame sensor. Next, inspect the tip of the burner for excessive wear. There should be a small hole in the very tip, no more than about one eighth of an inch. If the tip has been burned through any larger than that, the burner must be replaced. It can cause an unstable flame and affect flame rectification. While the blower is removed from the unit, locate and inspect the gas tube that runs from the gas valve to the manifold. This can become blocked, causing limited gas flow. The most common obstruction we find in this pipe is a spider's nest. So you will need to run a thermostat wire through the gas tube to make sure there is nothing blocking the gas flow. Do not push any air pressure toward the gas valve. The diaphragm is very sensitive and can be easily damaged. So, after completing this list of items and the boiler still will not light, we come down to two components to replace. At this point, we either have some type of internal control fault in the module that is not showing itself through the normal diagnostic process or we have an intermittent gas valve. Both are basically beyond real-time diagnostics. So, we are at the point of being a parts changer. Nobody likes it, but sometimes it is the last resort after exhausting all diagnostic procedures. So, we recommend trying a new gas valve first. If the problem is still not resolved, replace the control module. If neither of these devices rectify the problem, some part of the diagnostic procedure was skipped or not completed correctly. 
Go back through the steps and make sure each one is performed properly. Well, thanks for watching. We hope this video was helpful and be sure to download our Pro Tools app. It has everything you'll need to help diagnose and repair Weill McLean products along with lots of other helpful features.